Swarthy. Negro African American African Canadian Mulatto Colored Afro-Caribbean Indian
native. Aboriginal Black. called Swarty Stewart, King James and his Black Jacobites, historical anthropological proof and records. We're going to go into it real quick. All right. So right here, we're just looking at some coat of arms in this part of the book. Again, this has so much information. Make sure to go watch it if you haven't. And if you have, make sure to go back to it and reference it. We go over books like this one, description of the Western Islands of Scotland, books from the 1600s and 1700s describing here as it says the inhabitants of this ice were generally well proportioned and their complexion is for the most part black black so matching what the other author and the other source we just read said same thing some more coat of arms so in this video we go over this great book right here it's called memoirs of the secret services of john mckay this is from 1733 he was a spy 
sent to spy on the Jacobites and he describes the Jacobites. I'm just going to give you one example. So right here, we're just going to go over an example. This is Charles Duke of Somerset, master of the horse. It's going to describe him. This book, the spy described every person that he saw. This is a primary source. And it says here, he is of middle stature, well shaded, very black complexion, a lover of music and poetry. He is very black. So we go over many references, different Jacobites in that book. So make sure to catch the whole video. Another thing I want to show you that we go over is a book from Harvard College Library, as you guys can see here. It's called the Jacobite Gleanings from State Manuscript. Short sketches of Jacobites, the transportation in 1745. All right, so again, the Jacobites were prisoners of war. They were transported by Protestants, Oliver Cromwell, to the Americas, to the plantations, to the Caribbean, to Virginia, many different plantations. These were the people working in your so-called cotton and tobacco fields too. And these were black, Scottish, black, Irish people. This is just one example of the passenger list. These are again, Jacobites. This is from Harvard University. We got Robert Adam, he's brown. We're gonna see what says remarks right here. William Bell, black, curled hair. Just like Joseph Ritson in that first book we just read said that the Highlanders are black with curled hair. Brown's complexion with curled hair, just like this guy, William Bell. Dougal Campbell, brown complexion. We're gonna see a Campbell tomorrow in somebody's genealogy. So you guys can see Campbells coming from Scotland have a brown complexion. They were already so-called Negro. I need you to zoom in so Phil can read it. Highlight it, I got it circled. You got Levite cities, you got Kingdom of Ephraim in blue, you got, uh, what does it say? Abiel, can you read some of that? Uh, you got the, the home, well, so you see Ephraim in the blue circle in the center. Above it is Levite cities. Towards the right is Levite cities as well. And that's Nigeria, Nigeria above it. You can see it, underline Nigeria right there. It's right above the blue. Yeah, right across. Yeah, put your cursor right there. Right. Now, in Nigeria, you got Levites. And this is old, Phil, from the 1800s. Okay? 
Up above it, can you read the book? It says Oldham Jewish Colonies in circle to the left. Can you see that, right. Abiel? The homie, you have the homie Jews to the left, up up to the top. Uh, it says Ga Ganatan, Jewish Kingdom of Ganata. You go to the bottom, bottom where it says San Tome. Right. See, oh, under the blue, under the blue. Uh, under, underneath the blue, the blue circle, it says San Tome yeah, Jews. San Tome. San Tome Jews in the bottom it says Mar Marumba Mar Mar Marumba Jews. Right. So the old scholars, Phil, this is what I need all your viewers to understand. All the old scholars from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, they knew who was on the continent of Africa. They knew exactly who they brought to America, where they brought throughout the Caribbean, so forth and so on. This history has been lost to us 100%. Now we're rising up, Phil, and restoring this information to our people. Christ was black, Moses black, Jeremiah, King Solomon. They, these were all black men. Sarah black, Abraham black, Adam and Eve black. Everybody that was for the Most High in the Bible was black, what we would call black today, Phil. And that's what's been lost and destroyed in the minds of our people. Was there any, any other books or no? Was that it? Okay, that was it, Phil. And, and, and you see, based on that map, the so-called Middle East was Africa. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, I'm glad you said that. I show, I put something up there about the Middle East. Watch this, Phil. I'm glad you mentioned that Middle East. Put that on the screen. Why is it, read that, Abio. come on. Why is it called the Middle East? Raise it up. The term Middle East originated from the same European perspective that described Eastern Asia as the Far East. Jump down the background. Raise it up. I want this section here. Read it. Background. The origin of the term Middle East is considered to be in the British India office during the 1850s. It was popu popularized by Alfred Thayer Mahon, an American naval strategist who was referring to the region between Arabia and India in 1902. Mayan's definition of the Middle East was the area around the Persian Gulf. Sir Ignatius Valentine Kiro further enlarged this definition to cater for the Asian regions whose territories extended to India. Prior to the Second World War, another term, the Near East, Denote, denoted that the, uh, the eastern shores of the Mediterranean, in addition to regions centered around Turkey, Middle East was used by the British while naming its command in Egypt in the late 1930s. It was after this usage that the term became widely used in the West. In 1946, the Middle East Institute began operating in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United all right, so you know what I want y'all to see? You see that first sentence there? The origin of the term Middle East is considered to be the British India office during the 1850s. Most people don't realize there was something else going on in the 1850s. They built the Suez Canal, which cut off Israel from Egypt. When you read the Bible, it says the children of Israel walked from Egypt into Israel. Christ in Matthew 2.13 walked from Israel into Egypt. So what happened when they built the Suez Canal? They built this huge water system that separated uh, Israel from Egypt, well, separating Israel from Africa, I'll word it that way. The Suez Canal cut off Israel from Africa, okay? And that's when the term Middle East came about. That's why when you mention the term Israel, you say the word Israel to people to go, oh, that's in the Middle East. Nobody says today, Phil, that's in Africa. Why? Because the Suez Canal was created in 1859, the same time that they uh, made that term, the Middle East, popular. That's what they've done. Phil. This whole thing has been a great conspiracy against our people, the children of Israel. Well, you can't hide the truth um, forever because they tried. I mean, they tried and, and now, you know, a lot of the truth is starting to come to the light. And even watching this, you know, program today, some people are going to learn a lot, you know, just based off of that history you've shown right there. And that even that map, it was shown that basically you've seen a lot of, you know, different Jewish groups on the continent that they didn't even know about. Right. Um, Negro.
nigger. Indigenous. A railroad causeway separates the vast salt lake. The northern and southern portions of the lake have distinct salinity and depth levels. That is, you guessed it, some artistic coloring. This drone operator opted to grab the finest video possible by launching his drone into the air and flying directly above it. What you're seeing now is a genuinely breathtaking sight. This drone photo only catches two of the lake's many colors. There are also green and pink regions created by the high saline levels. Add a few more hues and you'll be on your way to the world's first natural rainbow lake. Anything that says Spanish came from Moorish, right? Therefore, the Spanish people today are being treated the way that they're treated because they're really Moriscos. They're really the Spanish that helped dispossess everybody else. 
because we the only people that historically ever allowed them to exist in their own pogrom so long as they paid us our tribute and they didn't perpetuate all of that stuff on us. And they didn't until we fell to the manipulation of the Spanish that they helped manipulate and then eventually forced all of them into servitude because after Isabella and them sold us out, Isabella wind up dead in 1504, Christopher Colon wind up dead in 1506, uh, Caesar Borgia, who had the initial circular treaties of the old empire and the relationship between the so-called American Indians and the Moors of the empire, how they were related through the treaties and all of that, they killed him and then used his image to set up the so-called Jesus Christ syndrome that everybody's functioning under. They got rid of everything.